Let, let's quickly hear the minister, and then we'll get into the studio to have a conversation. We have a chair for the NPP rep, but uh, is yet to arrive. When, when the NPP rep arrives, we will afford him or her a chair, and then we will get into the conversations. But take a look at this. Registered Sims were 26 million and 62,571, representing 62%. The self-service SIM registration app will be ready for commercial launch on Tuesday, 2nd August. Each registration via the app will be subject to a 5CD surcharge. Upon consultation with the industry and in view of the challenges enumerated above, I have very reluctantly decided to grant a final conditional extension. But what accounted for the unimpressive numbers and the extension? Delays in the issuance of the Ghana card was the largest single challenge bedeviling this exercise. And my information is that the NIA has not been able to issue all eligible persons with a Ghana card. Many data-only SIMs have also not been registered. And my information is that their owners were not aware that those SIMs also needed to be registered. Amputees and others who have some physical challenge are also a category of persons who are having some difficulties registering their SIM. Indicate that there was a 90% drop in SIM registrations as soon as the first deadline was extended on 21st March. Until a week ago, there were no queues at any registration center. People started rushing to register when they realized that the deadline was imminent after going to sleep when it was extended. Any SIM that has not been fully registered by the end of August will be barred from receiving certain services, including voice and data services. It will also be more expensive to use unregistered SIMs. Kindly do not blame your service provider when you suffer that fate due to your own inaction. To be forewarned is to be Okay, so that's Esla Osokufo, Minister for Communication, uh, Digitalization and Innovation. Sam, good morning to you. You predicted that this day, again, this will be the fourth time you were predicting, or third time, that this day would happen again, and it's happened. Where, where, where are we getting it wrong? The flip-flop, the U-turn, the back and forth. Where is the ministry or the minister getting it wrong? Well, good morning again to, to you, to the good people of Ningo Pram Pram, and um, to our viewers. It's been a painful spe spectacle to, to watch. And, and I said that this performance by the Minister for Communications oh. is going to be the subject of case study in many university lecture halls for students of public policy mm. on how not to implement public policy. If you listen to the minister yesterday, she, she blamed everything and everybody except herself, from the conflict in Boku mm. to the NDC to the NIA, mm. but didn't take any blame. It's unfortunate that you have such a shambolic rollout of public policy for a technological product which is supposed to make things better and right. easier. Right. Technology eases things. This is making things more cumbersome. You know, the minister clearly has lost the plot. Because as minister, you're not an implementer. You give policy directions. Right. On this matter... So agency has to implement. The National Communications Authority ought to be implementing this policy. Mm. They have technically skilled professionals who know what ought to be done, not the minister. But when the minister decides to relegate an agency, an authority under her, that ought mm -hmm. to be implementing policy... Mm -hmm and be front and center. And then she turns around to say, why are people blaming her? Who should we blame? Hmm. You have sidestepped the agency, the authority. The 
the NCA has been silent on this matter. Nobody has heard the NCA give any implementation plan. It's always the minister. Ministers, your job is supposed to be policy. Their silence could mean their consent. No. Their silence would, is simply meaning that they have been sidestepped and they are listening to the madam at the top. Who doesn't want to listen to anybody? Because we have made this... Look, and this is not rocket science. Mm -hmm. You get me? This is not rocket science. Look, if you listen to the minister yesterday, and that's what I've said... Once again, she set herself up for ridicule and for failure. How? Her directives... Kasa <sighs> from her. Her directives are just hot air. Hmm. It's like a haughty headmistress who is trying to talk down her students. She works for us. She serves us. Hmm. That's one thing she should bear in mind. She's a public servant. She can't be telling us that she's reluctantly granting us. Reluctantly. Like we care. You don't? Whether reluctantly or willingly, you will grant us the extension. And you have. Up, up until when? Up until it makes logical sense. And that's where the question comes. Why should we have the biometrics retaking again? Why shouldn't we? Because the NIA has their biometrics. And if you are using the NIA card, which is the Ghana card, all you need to do is query the system using the details that they have entered mm -hmm. and you populate it. But because the ministry is engaged in its own procurement, instead mm -hmm. of using the NIA's procurement system, mm -hmm. the, NI the Ministry of Communication wants to do procurement, and so they've sidestepped an existing platform that the mm -hmm. NIA has, which mm -hmm. SNITS mm -hmm. used recently. Right. You didn't hear Peshishinians being told DVLA to, go, as well. to, go, to go and bring their SNIT cards. Mm. DVLA didn't ask drivers to bring their licenses to get linked to... It's happened. Is there money involved? Oh, absolutely. It's procurement. It's procurement. That's the interest of the minister. Not, not, not a platform that works. Mm. Not a platform that has a track record of working. It's, it's about procurement for her. And so Ghanaians are going through all of this. So people have to then go and queue again. At, at registration centers. And so you see a challenge. But let's even go back to the 16.8 million who don't even have the Ghana card at all. Right. Per the minister's own uh, data, as at 21st of July, the NIA had issued 15.5 million cards. Mm -hmm. 15.5 million cards. 15.5 million cards have been issued since 2018. Till date. Mm -hmm. Almost four years. You have a shortfall of 16.8 million SIMs that haven't been registered. Let's even assume that for each of those SIMs, one person owns two. Right. Which is a possibility. You know, let's, 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 let's assume that. Mm -hmm. One person owns two. It means you need about another 8.4 million registrants to go through the Ghana card system mm. to be able to register those SIMs. It took the NIA four years to produce 15.5 million cards. But you think that in two months, the NIA can produce 8.4 million cards. In two months, they will do half of what they've done in four years. Esla also has a magic wand she's going to wave that will make the NIA so efficient and so effective. Look. A number of issues arise from her directive. Mm -hmm. For example? First and foremost, she says that there is an app, mm -hmm. and right. you can use that app to get registered. That's right. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But when she goes ahead to announce a cost for the app, mm -hmm. then there's a big problem. Has that charge, mm -hmm. that fee, been approved by Parliament? I asked that question this morning. You, you have no information? No, Parliament has not. So why, why, why then are we announcing that? You should be asking the minister. But the minister is your colleague in Parliament, so... The minister seems to have absolutely no regard for the processes and principles of Parliament. Mm. Because, first and foremost, she's sidestepping, she's sidestepping the legislation Parliament has put in place. Mm. 
for registration of SIM cards, LI-2006. Now she's sidestepping the Fees and Charges Act and announcing a fee for a government service without recourse to the Fees and Charges Act of Parliament. An illegality in itself. I mean, you ask yourself, what's going on in this country? To see the contradiction. The SIM card's deadline, registration deadline, was yesterday. Mm -hmm. It was only yesterday that the minister gave the a roadmap mm -hmm. for Ghanaians in the diaspora okay, who the have SIMs that are active on how they could even get their SIM cards registered. So she is talking about Ghanaians being lazy and not wanting to get their SIMs registered. She has slept on her job. If there is any Ghanaian who's been lazy and failed in the exercise of their duty, it is the Minister for Communications who gave a directive in October, 1st of October, mm -hmm. to start the registration of SIM cards, but forgot that we have Ghanaians who are serving this country outside of this country. We have Ghanaians who are resident outside of this country who have SIM cards. Well, maybe and it is on the date mm. of the elapsing of the deadline that she remembers could, and is now giving could, a roadmap. Could it be one of the considerations, of, it is, of course, based on feedback that she got? So you see, that's why I said that, look, if this was a proper jurisdiction, the Minister for Communication should still not be holding her job. She has shown that she's completely clueless and incompetent. That, that's, in, that's, that's not fair. What is not fair? What is not fair? Ministers resign <clears throat> when agencies under them <clears throat> fail in their actions. This is not an agency failing. This is the minister herself failing. Like I said, if the minister had remained the initiator of policy mm. and allowed the agency under her, the, the NCA, to do the implementation of this policy, NCA has enough technical hands mm. to have known that you needed to also have a platform and a roadmap for Ghanaians outside the country to, to be able to register. Mm. So you you on the day of deadline, you are now announcing a roadmap for a platform that has not been tested. A platform that we do not know its functionality. Mm -hmm. And she herself alluded to when he said, bearing any unforeseen circumstances. Right. You understand? So we should ask ourselves. You have rolled out something for 10 months. In 10 months, you absolutely forgot that you have Ghanaians outside who need to register. And it's not like nobody has been screaming this out. We've been mm -hmm. talking about this. She had no plan for them. And, 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 and then now you say that they outside the country can register on the app using their passport. That's right. On what basis, what, what power? You see, when I argued about LI-2006 mm. and said to the ministry that that LI is the only law in this country that regulates the, reg the registration of SIM cards and that that LI in Section 2 mentions an identification document and in Section 10 lists those identification documents as the voter's card, the driver's license, the passport, the health insurance card, and the Ghana card. Health insurance, leave it out because mm. of the functioning, the, the effect of Abu Ramadan versus That's Electoral right. Commission. Yeah. I was yeah. told yeah. by the minister and, and, and her spokespersons that no, that's not the law we are using. We're using LI2111. And LI2111 says we must use only the Ghana card. Okay. For the purposes of this conversation, let's even assume that that wrong position. Mm. Is right. Is the minister now telling us that she's flouting the provision of the law that she says says she can only use Ghana card to now ask other Ghanaians mm. to use passport? But, but there's a caveat to it. The minister is a lawyer. She said you can use it to register, and after three months, you come, you regularize no. it with your Ghana card. No, is that not what you no. said? Don't 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 confuse your listeners. I'm not confusing you. I'm asking you a question. The three months mm -hmm. is for persons entering the entering country. The country. That's right. When you travel to any country today mm -hmm. at the airport, you can buy a SIM card and register it. That's right. It's got limited functionality. In fact, when you go to a country like the UAE, when you arrive at Dubai, when the immigration officer stamp your passport, they put a SIM card in there. It's valid for 90 days. 
if you want to use it beyond 90 days, you then have to go through a more detailed right. KYC. But, but that's so the 90 days. No, no, please, no, no. So, please so, let so, me land. So, let me that's, land. That's one leg. The other leg of the passport bid for people living in the diaspora. Johnny, you please don't start confuse. Register. No, 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 hold, no, no, no. hold on. Johnny, you, don't you, confuse hold on, the hold issues. On, hold on, hold on. I know that you are the vice chancellor of Stubborn Academy, but yeah, allow me. <laughs> now, you can register outside with your passport. That's what she said. And then while you make efforts to get your Ghana card. Is that not what she said? Johnny, your line of questioning is going to confuse your listeners. Please listen to me. And please don't follow the misinterpretation and misinformation out there. I'm, I'm putting the issues, the said please, to you. The issues mm -hmm. of three months mm -hmm. is limited to persons entering this country who need SIM cards for their stay. Mm -hmm. Most times when you're entering Ghana, you have a 90-day window. That's right. And so you can register. If your stay here would cost you to stay beyond 90 days, for example, you're a contract worker mm -hmm. and your contract is for 180 days, you have a work permit. She's made it clear that in that instance, you, you try to get the non-resident mm -hmm. Ghana card right. and use that to do registration. Right. For persons outside, and go back and play her, her press mm -hmm. briefing, for, for your viewers to hear, yeah, so that it is not that Sam George is saying, go and let your let production mm -hmm. cut that portion now and play it. You want to produce what, the show now. Oh, yeah, no, so that we are clear. <laughs> what she said mm. was for Ghanaians outside, they can register on the app, because right. the app is a VPN API. That's right. That will determine that you're outside the country. And on the basis of that, you can register your SIM card using your Ghanaian passport. There is mm. no time frame for that registration. Because there are Ghanaians who are residents in the UK. For example, if you're a student who's just gone to the UK, mm. you I, don't I, have I a Ghana card. I'm wrapping so up. Can come in. You have a four, you are doing a four-year program. Mm -hmm. For four years, you're not coming back home. You're on scholarship. Mm -hmm. So... There is no three months timeline for that. It means that person has registered their SIM card with their passport. And that's what I'm asking. For those Ghanaians, what legal backing? Okay. What is the legal basis for her to give that direction? And you see, because I represent the people, mm. and I think that we want to help the people. If you are here in Ghana, and you don't have a, a Ghana card like me, and you want to get registered, and you think that Ghana card, you've gone to register for Ghana card. Yes, they've not given you your card. Mm. And this app comes. Simply download a VPN. Download a VPN app. Change your location, your, VP, your IP location to outside Ghana. Go on the app. They're teaching people to and, do bad things. No. We are taking advantage of the poor policy implementation of the minister. Use a VPN and register your SIM card with a, with but, a Ghanaian but, but, passport. You, you seem to have a way out of, of all the challenges that the ministry and the minister seem to. And let me quickly uh, uh, introduce uh, Prince Fosu Sefas while he's the CEO of GIFEC. Good to see you. Good to see you. I'll, I'll you. come to you shortly. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah. you seem to have an idea of how this, we can get out of this quagmire. Why are you, on that same strength, discouraging people from registering? I haven't discouraged people from registering. I have made a point, look, the NIA is not structured in a way to produce SIM cards, uh, 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 Ghana cards, mm. in large volumes in a short period. The NIA is structured and built as an institution to produce cards on a going mm. basis. So it's a continuous, continuous registration, registration agency. Mm. Now you have a minister who has chosen to make the product of the NIA's work a sole card for registration and has gone ahead to put a deadline. If you want to use the NIA's product, then make your product or your, 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 your directive Assessment. contaminous with the, product, the, the, the operations of the NIA on a continuous basis. If you choose to set a deadline and the NIA can't meet it, I mean, faith and hope. When she was asked the question about whether the NIA can produce the cards, yesterday, you heard the answer. She said she hopes. Hope and faith. Are not functions of public policy making. Tam, so take take a second back quickly, and then the princess try to explain some of the concern or answer some of the concerns that you had. Satisfied? <laughs> I can understand, Prince. I mm. mean, um, he he has to protect his boss, and so I know that deep inside of his heart, most of the things he said, he himself he doesn't agree and believe in. Oh. It. But I'll, I'll just <laughs> say a few things he also said, which are. Um, factually incorrect. I would, I would, I would set the record straight. First and foremost, it is, it is not true 
that the NDC, um, when William, William Haji was not there for eight years, he was there for a little over four years, and then Griffiths took mm, over. Griffiths, yeah. um, and, but in the eight years of the NDC, the result it is, was it the is same, absolutely though. not true. The result was that the same. There were no cards produced. You've seen prominent persons. President Kufo was res was registered. He received his card in his mm -hmm. own house. Mm -hmm. Park Wisindu has put out his card publicly. Mm -hmm. That was issued to him in 2010. You understand me? Recently, you saw the NIA destroy. You re right, remember right. The, videos. The, 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 the videos of well, cards they, that they, were well, printed. They said they were old cards. They said old those cards. were old cards. Yeah. So if you are telling me that cards were not produced, nothing was done recently. So I'm, I'm just putting the facts straight so that we realize that it is not flowery, fine, slang English that, 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 <laughs> that necessarily means that everything is right. I get it. You need to protect your boss. But let's be factual. Again, let me call, you, let me call Prince out. Mm. When he says that LI2111, says that the Ghana card is going to be the sole card. He hasn't read that Ella. If he has, he won't make that point. I can challenge him, and I can give him my tablet. I mean, the CEO I'll, of Gifek has not read the I. Clearly, he hasn't. I, I didn't say that. Oh, you did. You can play it. You yeah. said, you can play the voice, because as soon as you said it, I wrote it down. The, the, he the said, soul, yeah, he, he said, that. you said, he it is the sole card. You said the Ghana card is the sole that card. That was no. when I asked the conversation yes. about their passports. Yes. Yeah, inclusion Section 7 of LI2111 is here. Read it. Mandatory use of national identity card. 7-1. A national identity card issued to an individual shall be used for the following transactions where identification is required. And it lists them, 13. It doesn't say shall be the sole card. And that's been the government of our argument. Mm. When you say something shall be used, it makes it mandatory. mandatory it doesn't yeah. make it unitary. Mm. In law, when something is going to be the only thing, it is made mandatory. Again, let's be clear. When you go to section 23 of this LI, the same act, mm, yeah. of this same LI 2111, there's actually a revocation clause where it revokes existing legislation that this would supersede. And in there, it revokes. It says, legislative instruments made under the Identity Cards Act, mm. 1972, NRCD 129, and enforced immediately before the commencement of these regulations, are hereby revoked. LI 2006 is not revoked. So when Prince makes the point, that's why I said respectfully, I'm sure he hadn't averted his mind and read it. Maybe it's part of the briefings he was given, but whoever gave him that oh, briefing wow. misled him. Again, he says that there are exemptions in the law. Mm. LI2111. Again, I challenge him. There are no exemptions that allow for the minister to say, you can use this. Again, if you read that LI, section 2 of that LI provides exemptions. Could, could the minister be using, taking her power from uh, Article 296? Article on, 296 on, on is discretion. Administ administrative, on discretion, uh, discretionary discretion, powers yes. cannot be used arbitrarily. And cannot be, and you cannot have discretionary power on something where legislation exists. Discretionary power is used where there is no legislation. Mm. Where there is specific legislation, you cannot use discretionary power. Section two is section two of LI two one one is where the exemptions are. These are the exemptions: exempt individuals, diplomats, or employed by a diplomatic mission or consular mi mission, employed by the UN or an agency of the UN, a spouse or a dependent of any of such persons. Mm -hmm. Those are the only exemptions in the law. Which exemptions here? empower the minister to use to say you can use your passport as a Ghanaian outside the country so that's what i'm saying his brief is faulty now let's let's deal with the fact that he says the minister is a listening minister yes really? you have your doubts we've been talking to the minister since october last year the very things we're talking about and even if you go back even if you go to my facebook page barely two weeks ago mm. when i returned from malawi I was accused by persons who are aligned to the NDC that why was I even begging the minister? Because I literally made a plea to the minister with a way out, with suggestions on how we can make this less painful for Ghanaians. And she didn't listen. The committee has met with the minister. Mm. At least our side of the committee has met with the minister on three occasions on this matter. She's not listening to any of the things. Mm. And when you tell me that this is a minister who is working and delivering, I get it. You're protecting your boss. <laughs> you're in protecting your boss, you're protecting yourself as well. Because if you come and sit, if he comes to sit here and state the technical truths that he knows, that mm. I know he knows, mm. he may not see the end of the week there. But you see... Oh, how? Oh, I mean... The minister doesn't believe in professionals if, and... If she did, she would have listened to his advice. Before he went to Gifek, he was at NCA. And that's why I said the minister has sidestepped NCA in this implementation. And that's why you are seeing this kind of mess. Okay. If Prince was going to speak technically, mm. 
without fear of repercussions. He will tell you that the minister's implementation of a policy, including deadlines, mm. at a time when she is still thinking and doesn't have the solution as we speak today, mm. for persons who are disabled or living with disability, mm. is in itself a failure. The fact that it was only on the date of the deadline that she could come up with a roadmap that has still not even been tested mm. for persons outside of this country. You tell me that this is a minister who has been listening. We've been raising this issue since October last year. Do you see another extension coming? Oh, look. <laughs> whether, she, whether she likes it or yes, her hope that the NIA would produce enough cards mm -hmm. For you to reach a sufficient enough threshold where you will say, okay, let us, let us say those who have not done this mm -hmm. will be punished, cannot be achieved in one month or two months. Hmm. He used the example of the voter's ID card. Now, let's clarify this. When you, when you are registering for the voter's ID card, they capture all your, your ten fingers. That's right. When you are going to verify, they capture all your ten fingers. You use one finger to verify. Okay, and that is because of the processes that have been spelled out in the CI legislative instrument. It is a constitutional instrument, it is a, a, a creation of law, mm. a creation of parliament. Mm. You must verify biometric verification devices as a layer of security. Is he telling me that driver's license, DVLA, who didn't require drivers to come back and do a, 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 a biometric capture mm -hmm. before their database has been linked to the NIA database are wrong? Is he telling me that SNITs that has done the same for all SNIT payers, uh, including himself, mm. his SNIT card, his, he's, a SNIT, he's a SNIT payer. Mm -hmm. His SNIT details have been linked with NIA. Did SNIT invite him to come and do data capture? SNIT simply used the NIA thing. You see, when you ask him about that, that one day, he says, hey, I can't yeah, he said, talk. He said he, he's he, not the he's one He's not the answer. one doing, yes. doing that one. He can't answer. Like, yes. You're but asking the ones, about procurement. Nah. I mean, am I... Uh, but no, I'm but asking. You check the no, app. listen. I asked if you have checked Forget the procurement. App. Like I said, he's a technical person. Prince, are you telling me as a technical man who has worked at the NCA and has worked in the industry before that the only way you can verify and authenticate that I, Sam George, own the SIM card I use is by me going back to recapture my biometrics when already my biometrics, those biometrics, sit with the NIA and MTN. My service provider has my details. Are you telling me that you are saying MTN cannot query the AFIS system? And on the basis of that query, verify my identity? Okay. Is that the suggestion I, you are I, making? Allow him to answer. Is that the suggestion you are making as a technical person? 